Hi, I'm Dr. Roseanne Floretti. And I'm Professor Joe Cornelius. And welcome to the Night School of Communication. Uh, today we will introduce to you our majors, uh, as well as the many resources and opportunities we have in the Night School for you, and some tips for success in our majors as well. So in the Night School, you can actually choose two majors the communication major or the multimedia storytelling major, in addition to core courses that everyone in the major will take. For communication, for example, you get to choose a concentration of your interest and you'll take 16 credit hours in that concentration. So for communication, you can do communication studies, which just dives deeper into the communication field, health communication and take classes on health campaigns and narratives, uh, sports communication, where you can learn about sports publicity and promotion, or organizational and strategic communication if you choose to do strategic planning for organizations in the future. And on the second major that we have in the Night School of Communication is the Multimedia Storytelling major. Um, and the MMS major, we have two different uh, concentrations, journalism and media studies. By default, you'll be enrolled in the journalism concentration. If you would like to switch to the media studies concentration, you would need to let your advisor know. So in your freshman and sophomore years, you really want to focus on those core courses as well as selecting a concentration of your interests. Uh, so in each major, there are different core courses, but some are similar as you see. So just know that when you start our program, you really want to focus on hitting those core courses because many of them serve as prerequisites for your concentration classes and for other classes that are in the core. So for example, for communication, you really want to enroll in COM 101 and then eventually COM 250 as those serve as key prerequisites for the rest of your communication courses. Yes, uh, certainly, same goes for a multimedia major. Um, the MMS 101 and MMS 210 will serve as great introductory courses. That's really gonna give you the, the skills and the theories that you need in order to achieve uh, stuff in the other courses. So in addition to our major, the Knight School has multiple opportunities and resources for you to use in your classes and outside of your classes to get more application and experience in your field. So um, one of the biggest uh, uh, resources that we have at the Knight School is the equipment room. The equipment room is spreaded with camcorders, uh, digital SLRs, um, multiple lenses, GoPro cameras, tripods, um, basically everything you're gonna need for a multimedia uh, project. Uh, we also have microphones, we have boom poles, uh, and just the list goes on and on. It's really a state of the art and very competitive equipment room compared to other communication departments. Um, additionally to that, we have multimedia workstations complete with uh, tablets, scanners, film scanners. Um, we also have a, uh, what we call it a um, digital tablet that helps with animation. Um, we also have a podcast studio, um, as you can see in photograph on the bottom right, uh, that is the podcast with two people. However, the podcast studio can accommodate up to four people. Um, we also have a Mat Lab, which has 20 uh, up-to-date uh, computers that are refreshed every two years, uh, complete with Adobe uh, Creative Suite. So we have everything that uh, multimedia students and communication students would need to complete their assignments and um, other, uh, other um, requirements for the club, organization, community service, and so forth. Yeah, and you can use that podcast studio for your other classes or for your communication classes. And know that we professors in the night school also 
we'll utilize it for our classes. As in that bottom photo, that was me interviewing a graduate student in the night school for the MMS social media and audience class. And I interviewed experts in the field. You can either, you can also interview people on the phone and have it record in to the podcast studio. Um, and I had my classes listen to that, but know that since we are very hands-on, you will also be using these resources in your classes in the night school. So. So in addition to the resources that we have, the physical resources, we also have many opportunities for you um, to engage our community, the Charlotte community and the Queens community and farther than that. But we also have organizations where you can get hands-on experience with media production as well. Uh, so one of our opportunities, a huge opportunity, we have Digital Charlotte housed within the Night School of Communication which works on creating digital literacy with community partners and helping members of the Charlotte community who need it the most access the much needed digital literacy school um, skills. And also, in addition to Digital Charlotte, you will find community engagement opportunities within your classes as well. Your capstone project will involve the community engagement part with Digital Charlotte and you'll work with their partners to help bring digital literacy skills to the community. Uh, but in addition to that, in classes, we often bring in partners, community partners, to speak to our classes. So for example, uh, MMS classes have brought in NASCAR racing to talk about storytelling and marketing. Uh, and then our journalism classes have gone to the Mecklenburg Superior Courthouse to learn about First Amendment skills hands-on. So, you'll have lots of community engagement opportunities in your classes, as well as within Digital Charlotte as well. And then in addition to that, we also have two organizations where you can gain um, hands-on media production experience, including Queens Chronicle, which is faculty-led organization with student uh, journalists, and Project Airwaves, which is also a student-led club. Okay, so another uh, great source of uh, opportunity for students at Queens, uh, especially in a night school, is uh, JBIP, which uh, stands for John Bell International uh, Program. And as you see photographed here is a JBIP trip from 2016 when Bob Page and I went to Rio, Brazil for the summer games. And we, we covered stories uh, about the surrounding communities and how they were affected by the Olympic uh, Games. And also you'll see listed uh, other uh, communication and multimedia storytelling professors uh, who also went on trips uh, to South Africa and Australia. And additionally to that, um, we were gonna to go to Tokyo in 2020 uh, and that was postponed to 2021. So we'll be hopefully uh, after coronavirus, uh, the job will be gone in 21. And there will be many opportunities for everyone at Queen's University. Um, JBIP is, 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 a, is one of our leaders in terms of international education and the country. So, and they provide a, a very uh, financial friendly opportunity for students. Um, very little, very little out of pocket expense uh, occurred from it compared to other national um, universities when it comes to international education. So you certainly want to check it out. And that'll be located on the first floor in the same building as the night school. Yeah, and in addition, uh, if you are unable to travel, know that we have, we break the JBIBs down to allow as many students as possible to experience them. So for example, with the Tokyo trip, we planned on having a social media team just grounded at Queens University for those students who couldn't travel. Um, so they could still be a part of this experience and get that experience while still being at Queens. And know that these aren't always just communication students. The Tokyo trip also involves um, partnership with McCall School of Business students as well. Uh, so lots of opportunities for you to be involved in it. Definitely don't pass it up if you can. So, so lastly, we wanted to provide some tips for success on our majors, whether MMS 
or communication. We thought these tips would be helpful for you in being successful in the night school. So do you want to take number one? Yeah, sure. I would take your lead here. And so <laughs> um, we, we put together a list of things that we think will help a student be successful in the night school. Um, so we're starting with consistent high quality work and being on time. Uh, when you make a promise, you keep it. When you make a, a buy-in meeting, you show up and show up on time. Being respectful of other people's time, uh, not just the faculty, but the staff and your classmates. Um, we do take you on a call very seriously. And, um, we hold it in high regard. Um, in addition to being a responsible learner and not just doing the minimum requirement, we advise that you meet with your upperclassmen, meet with the sophomores, the juniors, the seniors, talk to them, find out, you know, what are some key, key things to do to pass a certain course or what are some opportunities that you're looking to. Um, not everything is going to be spelled out for you by your, your faculty members. So it's good to talk and get to know other people and find out what the word is on the campus. Yeah. And then yeah. when you're in your classes, uh, be actively engaged, um, participate, comment, you know, and when you do comment, comment with thought, like have an actual reason why you're making a comment, not just to make a comment. Yes. And know that our classes are very hands-on. It's, we'll have discussion, we'll have application activities, we'll have those guest speakers from the community. So mm -hmm. in order to reap those benefits of theory to practice that we do in all our classes, you have to take responsibility for your end of the learning journey. So participate in discussion actively, not just to comment, right? Participate in those application activities. They're there to give you the practice you need in bringing our major to life. And in addition to that, where our number two mark, engage in the night school community and beyond. So instead of just showing up to our classes, as we stated, the night school provides you tons of opportunities mm -hmm. to help you in your career goals and gain more experience in these interested fields. Um, one of those could be networking and taking advantage of the night school events. So we have many events that involve alumni or speakers uh, in fields, media fields, or experts in the fields. And often they happen at these events we call Coffee at Night. Coffee at Night also serves as a way to build a night school community and connect with your other students, connect with faculty, learn more about them. Um, so I really encourage you to take advantage of the events that night school often offers with that. Um, in addition, kind of going off of that engaging, being hands-on, um, use those resources and opportunities that we have, really actively apply the hands-on classes that we have that will give you practice for the careers that you're interested in. And I know Joe has some expert advice too. <laughs> um, in addition, definitely take advantage of those resources and tools that uh, Professor Cornelius told us all about. Uh, as they are available to you and not many communication programs have the wealth of opportunities there with the physical resources, but also digital Charlotte and community engagement. So definitely take care of that. And by doing that, you'll venture out of the Queens campus, right? Get stories from the Queens community and from beyond uh, that to the Charlotte community as well and take part in our community engagement initiatives and that will help you bridge uh, the divide from your classroom to the world outside of Queens. So that ends our presentation and we just want to say again, welcome to the Night School Communication. We're so excited to meet you. Um, and again, feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Our emails are provided there in the presentation. And thank you for watching this video. Um, we cannot wait to meet you in person face to face. Uh, have a great day. Thank you.